first of all, I, I would say, uh, you know, always spend time with the Lord every day. Uh, it's hard to do that. And part of that time should be reading the scripture. I try to read four chapters a day. That will get me through the Bible in one year. I try my best to spend time after I've read the scriptures to pray. I want to tell you something. I've said this to my congregation. It is hard to pray because there are so many distractions. So if you think praying is, is an easy thing, I'll just say a few prayers. It is not. If you want to have intimate prayer with God, journal. Make a list of your prayer requests. And for those prayers that really, really need answer quick, I would cry out to God. I'd shut the door to my, my prayer closet, like in the movie War Room, and I would make those prayers verbal and loud, and I would cry out to God. And I have done that many times, and I'm telling you, God answers those prayers so, so fast. It's like instant answer almost. I'm not saying it'll always be that way, but I'm just saying you've got to have a walk with him. You've got to fellowship with him every day. You cannot do this without him. And if you're not praying and you're not reading the scripture, you are doing it on your own and it's not going to cut it. So you need him in your life. And it won't be easy, but set aside a time and make it happen. Do the best you can. God understands it isn't always going to fall into place on the time that you want it to, but, but do the best you can with that. I, I would encourage people to wait on the Lord. I've made some, some mistakes in my life because I didn't wait on the Lord. I saw something and I wanted it now. And so I moved on it. You know, I was driven by uh, passion and ambition uh, to get this or to have this for the church or in my own life, you know, make a purchase that I shouldn't have made. I never talked to God about it. And so, you know, as time went on, I realized I shouldn't have done this. So be patient. God is never in a hurry. If someone makes an offer to the church to maybe sell you something or if someone... Uh, has this idea, and it, you know, we've got to do this in the church now. Back off. Just back away from that and just say, I need to pray about that. You need to give me time, because God is never in a hurry. God will never shove something down your throat, and, and we just need to learn that. I, a while back, I, we, my wife and I, we, we bought a, a little vacation home in, in West Virginia, and it was the biggest mistake we ever made. We, we never prayed about it. We just saw it, loved it, and we bought it, and then I got sick with the cancer, and uh, and it's very cold where this place was. It's up in West Virginia near Deep Creek Lake where it's, they get 300 inches of snow some years. And um, I realized this ain't going to work. I can't retire in a place like this. There's not even a hospital, so to speak, of around here if I need one. And when you get older, you start thinking about crazy stuff like that. So I asked God to sell it. And uh, it didn't sell for a couple years. And then I cried out to God. I said, God, I apologize. I repent. I never asked you to do this. You let me do it in your submissive will. But I am, I'll never do that again. I'm so sorry. And I cried out. And when I cried out, the thing sold. Took a loss. But that's part of the game. Well, that's not a game. It's part of the journey, I should say. Uh, because I didn't listen to God. So, so never, never do anything spur of the moment or feel like you've got to make a decision instantly. Don't do it. Take your time. Northwest Baptist Church um, is going to be without a pastor, and they're going to be tempted. I've, I've already said this to the church. The first guy they hear to harm, you be patient, and you do what I've told you and what our denomination tells you. You need an interim pastor for at least a year. Um, I'm hoping uh, that God, I know God's dealing with that person right now, but some of you have said, well, years off awful long. No, it's not long. I've been here 37 years, and I'm hoping I can come back two years from now and people say, Gary, who? Because what happens with churches when a pastor's been here this long and he leaves, they jump on the first guy that comes, and statistics are very clear. That guy won't make it, but maybe 18 months to two years because people will compare him to the last pastor. The other thing I want to say is a lot of the newer fellows that I meet uh, who are new pastors at a seminary, a lot of them, and I'm sad to say this, are not doing hospital visits, um, they don't feel that's their responsibility, not doing visitation. They don't feel that's their responsibility, that the church should do that. And I just want to say, don't buy into that. Jesus did all of those things. He said when I was, he used an illustration. You know, he said, uh, I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison. You came to see me. I was naked and you gave me clothes. I was hungry and you gave me food. And the disciples said, Lord, when were you any of those things? And he said, as much as you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. 
So I want to tell the, these, these, these pastors, and, and our church who's going to be looking uh, for a new pastor, you get with that fellow and you make sure that fellow does those things and doesn't feel like he shouldn't have to do those things. You want a pastor who's going to love his flock. We are under shepherds. We love the sheep. We look out for the sheep. We love seeing new sheep come in. We're concerned when they're sick. We're there when they're dying. Uh, so that's, that's really the kind of person you want who's really going to be a part of the family and work side by side and, 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 and just be there for you. So don't buy into this new philosophy that so many pastors are becoming. Uh, that I, I, At least one, there are some that I know. I won't say it's many, but I know some that feel that way. There are some that have, they preach on Sunday and they're lost the rest of the week as far as you seeing them. There's no contact with them. It's like they're put on a pedestal. It's almost uh, like they're a celebrity status. And don't let that happen because that's not how God works. You want a man who's going to be there for you.